Hello, I'd like to give you a few examples of how to do hypothesis tests in R, and I'll do two examples in particular. So as usual, make sure you've downloaded the, uh, the example R scripts and the data that we'll be using. The first uh, example, we'll look at some uh, measurements of uh, recycled waste data uh, from different households. So the first thing is to load in the data. This data is in a CSV format, which stands for Comma Separated Variable. It's um, just a really easy sort of way to get the data into, into, um, into R. And um, you can actually sort of, if you've got um, your data in Microsoft Excel, you can actually save them, save it as a CSV data type, and that's a, an easy way to get it in. Let's have a look at the, uh, the data. So we've got our, um, a measurement of weight of that. It's either in kilograms or pounds, whatever. So we've got the data there. We've got, uh, you can see we've got 61 sort of measurements of data there in the sample. Uh, and um, the first thing I do normally is to create a variable called X, um, which is the variable that we're studying. So I'm reading it from the recycling uh, data frame and the recycle weight variable within that. So that's the recycling data frame. Recycling weight is the name of the variable. So I'm just gonna sort of read that in under X. Now the reason I like doing that is it's just quite frankly just a pain to, um, if you're sort of calling that one variable over and over again, it's painful calling it by the, uh, the full name there. So, so I call that X. Um, we can calculate the mean, oops, not there. Um, we can calculate the, um, the mean of X to see that the average weight collectors is 9.5. Um, there, 9.5 kilograms, so got the standard deviation as 4.1. Okay, so we've got a measure of middle and spread there. Now, what we're going to do is do a hypothesis test to see whether it's um, different, whether there's evidence here that the true population average is different from uh, 8.4 kilograms. And um, the idea behind this is that we've just collected one sample of households. So we're trying to make an inference based on this one sample about what might be true for all households, um, just based on this one sample. So, so just because we got in this one sample 9.54, that's not gonna be the true case for all households because we just collected 61 households. So to try to make an, sort of an inference about what might be the case across a thousand um, households in a suburb just from, the one this, from this one sample, we need to be careful. So. So the null hypothesis here is that the true average for the entire sort of um, the entire population of households is 8.4. Where did we get that from? Maybe it's um, what it was sort of five years ago when we did um, um, a measurement across all the households at that stage. So based on this one sample of 61 households, is there any evidence here that it's changed, that it's different from 8.4 kilograms now? Okay, so the null hypothesis is that there's been no change, 8.4 kilograms, whatever it was before. It's what it is now. Oops. And um, we're doing that t-test here as to whether it's um, whether it's different from that. So we'll just copy and paste that code in. So t-test. So it's calling our x variable here, which is the recycling data frame, the recycle weight uh, variable from within that. The null hypothesis is that the true population average is 8.4. Let's run that and see what it says. Now when the p-value is low, it gives us evidence that we can reject the null hypothesis. When the p-value is low, low, the null hypothesis must go. In this case, the null hypothesis is that the true population sort of um, average waste per household is 8.4 kilograms. Um, because the p-value is below between 1 to 5% threshold, that gives us strong evidence that we can reject that null hypothesis and conclude that the alternate is true, that, um, that it's different from 8.4 kilograms. And in this case, because our sample, it indicates that the, um, the mean was above, it's 9.54 kilograms, it's different from that, we can also conclude that it's gone up. Not only is it different, but it's actually increased from what it, um, what it was previously. Okay, so, so we've done our null hypothesis. So just because remember, just because you collect one sample and the sample mean is 9.54, that in and of itself is no indication that the um, that the um, the mean has changed or that it's true for the entire population. That's just one sample. It's just true for that one sample. It's not necessarily necessarily true for all households in this case. So, so what we're trying to do is collect a sample and then make an inference about what might be true for all households based on this one sample. 
And usually the reason why you're collecting a sample is because you don't have data for all the households. It's either expensive or difficult to collect that data. So, so all we can do is this one sample. Let's do a second one as well. So we'll just clean up our, um, our data space, just remove all of that data and the, um, the variables. So get rid of those once my copying and pasting actually works. So copy, paste in there. So it gets rid of all of that. Let's load in some data for some uh, some taxi fares that our company might be um, reimbursing employees for. And we'll have a look at the data. Okay, get rid of that one. Okay, so this is some taxi fares collected. It's some old data. Usually taxi fares are much more expensive these days. Uh, so we've just got some data collected. This might be some reimbursements we're doing for employees uh, for taxi fares collected. Okay, again, I don't. I like to sort of store that under um, an X variable so it makes it easy to call in our functions. Um, let's visualize it. Have a look at the histogram. So I'm using the Friedman Deaconess sort of bin widths here, which tend to be a bit better. And uh, we've just labeled the, the taxi fares um, axis down here. So, so we've got our histogram here. Um, again, histograms usually don't look fantastic in R. I mean, if you want a sort of good looking histograms, then maybe use a spreadsheet package like um, like um, Excel or something like that. But um, the good thing about R is that you can automate these. And um, especially from a software point of view, it's easy to automate and, and generate sort of web pages and things like that based on them. So we've got a histogram. We've got like a high number of, um, of, of cases are below about the sort of the seven or eight dollar sort of threshold. And um, we've got high positive skewness here. Um, in the, the data. We'll also see that skewness if you run a box plot. So obviously the minimum that a taxi fare could possibly be is zero, um, but it's sort of unlimited upside potential. These are outliers per hit, perhaps are some really big taxi cab fare late at night um, where some employee goes home or perhaps someone was going to the airport or something like that. We can see the middle 50% of the taxi fares seem to be somewhere between about sort of um, $5 and about sort of $25 in there as well. Okay, we can calculate the middle and the standard deviation. We can see that the average taxi fare is $16. The average distance from the middle is $13. Perhaps some time ago, we measured that the average taxi fare used to be $14, perhaps a few years ago. Um, has there been a change based on this sample of taxi fares that we've collected? Well, we can run that as a t-test. The null hypothesis is that the true value is equal to 14 for the entire population of all possible taxi fares. Um, we've collected a sample. Um, the sample mean in this case is 16.4, but is there evidence here that there's a significant, a statistically significant difference from this null hypothesis of 14? And if you look down here, um, we've got our degrees of freedom of 149. That indicates that the sample size was 150 because degrees of freedom is sample size minus one in this case. We've got a t-test statistic of 2.2. The fact that it's above 2 indicates that there's good evidence. But um, to really sort of work out whether you can reject the null hypothesis, the p-value is the one that's most useful here. And that's between 1 and 5% here. It's 2.6%, so it's strong evidence that we can reject that null hypothesis and conclude that based on this one sample, what's true for all of the taxi fares that, um, that um, we're reimbursing employees for is that it's different from 14. And because this sample was higher than 14, we can also conclude that it's not only different, but it's, it's higher. Okay, so there are two examples of hypothesis tests using R. Um, in the next video, I'll, I'll do some regressions.